This presentation is a part of Audio Adventure Theater. We can reach our world, if we will. The greatest lack today is not people or funds. The greatest need is prayer. Wesley Duell. Prayer is the mighty engine that is to move the missionary work. A.B. Simpson Does it not stir up our hearts to go forth and help them? Does it not make us long to leave our luxury, our exceeding abundant light, to go to them that sit in darkness? Amy Carmichael He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot lose. Jim Elliot I have but one candle of life to burn. And I would rather burn it out in a land filled with darkness than in a land flooded with light. John Keith Falconer This generation of Christians is responsible for this generation of souls on the earth. Keith Green I believe that in each generation, God has called enough men and women to evangelize all the yet unreached tribes of the earth. It is not God who does not call. It is man who will not respond. Isabel Kuhn, missionary to China and Thailand. Depend on it. God's work done in God's way will never lack God's supply. Hudson Taylor. It is not in our choice to spread the gospel or not. It is our death if we do not. Peter Taylor Forsyth. Lights. 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 That's what they were. Yes, all of these men and women lived as lights in their generation. But what about you? Will you shine your light? The need is great. All of the great missionaries and Christians of the past are dead. It's your turn. CTV Productions presents to you Lighting Your Generation, an original audio drama written by Caleb Thiessen, starring Jesse Madrano and Xander Hartman. So, son, your mom tells me that you've been having some problems at school recently. Dad, it doesn't have anything to do with my grades. Don't worry. Well, sometimes there are more important things than grades, son. What is it? It's, it's my friend Mark. Well, what about him? He, uh, he's starting to act different. And he's doing things that I know are wrong, but, well, I can't say anything. Are his parents Christians? No, Dad, that's another thing. I've never actually explained to him about Jesus. I... I just didn't want to make it weird, you know? Okay, but now you're feeling you should say something. Well, yeah, Dad, but it's it's hard. I, I don't know how I'll take it. All right, well, here. Well, let me read you some verses from Matthew. See, they explain what the world should see when it looks at us. It says, Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And you see, son, we are supposed to be lights. And one of the main things about light is that people can see it. If Mark can't see your light, then you probably aren't acting like one. And Jesus commands us to be lights. I know, Dad. I just don't know what will happen. What if nothing happens if I talk to Mark? What if he stays the same way? 
Is there really any point? <sighs> well, maybe I should tell you about some people in the past who faced similar problems. Is that that book about missionaries? Yes. And one of the things that all these people had in common was that they shined their light in their generation. That they stood up for what was right even when it wasn't popular. Take Hudson Taylor, for instance. He left everything he knew and went to China to shine his light. Mr. Taylor, that was an excellent message, even if I didn't understand most of the Chinese. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm glad you could visit this evening. But I wish the Chinese felt the same way as you do about the preaching. Have there been no converts? Not one. I've been here two years and not a single salvation. Then why do you stay, Mr. Taylor? Every day, tens of thousands are passing away to Christless graves. And perishing China so fills my heart and mind that I feel no rest day or night. More laborers are needed. But if you see no results... All the responsibilities and consequences must rest on God. As his servant, I must only obey and follow him. The Great Commission is not an option to be considered. It is a command to be obeyed. But surely there must be something else you could do. Pray. We must all go forward on our knees. Mr. Taylor, I admire your faithfulness. I can see what these people mean to you. I know God's burden and love for them is far greater than mine. But yes, the Chinese do have a special place in my heart. If I had a thousand pounds, China should have it. If I had a thousand lives, China should have them. No, not China, but Christ. Can, can we do too much for him? Can we do enough for such a precious Savior? I will pray that God gives you fruit for your labor. Thank you. Mr. I... Taylor? Mr. Taylor? Uh, yes, sir? How can I help you? You don't know me. I'm not from here, but I've traveled far and near, searching for enlightenment and truth. I listened to your preaching tonight. And in all my years of searching, I've never heard anything like it. I've studied Confucius, Buddha, and Taoism, but I've never found rest until tonight. From now on, I'm a believer in Jesus. Tonight, I ask them into my heart. Praise the Lord! Your first convert, Mr. Taylor. The angels in heaven are rejoicing for you tonight. My heart is full of joy. But, I, I do have one question, Mr. Taylor. W what is that? How long has this gospel been known in your land? Oh, for several hundred years. W what? Is it possible that for hundreds of years you have known of these glad tidings, and yet only now come to preach it to us? My father sought after the truth for more than 20 years and died without finding it. Oh, why did you not come sooner? You see, there was a man who knew what his purpose was, to shine his light for God's glory, even when he didn't see any results. He was faithful. Yeah, Dad, that's great. I get it. But what if Mark gets mad at me when I talk to him? What if he never wants to be my friend again? Let me tell you about Amy Carmichael. She faced a very difficult culture in the land of India, the people there often did not seem very open to her light. Well, 
Miss Carmichael. It is a real pleasure to talk with you. Our missionary society back home will be very interested to learn about your work here in India. I am afraid that I shall never sober down into a proper missionary. What do you mean? I mean that everyone always thinks of missionaries as somehow better than other humans. They're supposed to be purer, nobler, and higher. I can never be that. I am so weak on my own. That is why I am glad he helps me. Because on my own, I can do nothing. Hmm. You have sacrificed much to come here. It is all too small. Jesus gave himself. Our prayers for the salvation of the world are merely a facade as long as we only give our leftovers and refuse to give ourselves. But sh surely we must pray. Of course. If you take prayer out, things begin to collapse. Prayer is the core of my day, sir. How can you pray, though? Really pray, I mean. Well, there is someone you were holding a grudge against, or have been talking critically about. Try it. You will find that it can't be done. That is certainly food for thought, Miss Carmichael. Hopefully I can talk with you again, but uh, for now, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, good to see you again. How are you? Not so well. Can't you please give me some medicine for my pain? I am sorry. You asked me this before, and I told you that there is no medicine I have that can cure your sickness. If I had some, I would give it to you. But you must have something. You, you are so wise. I'm afraid not. Well, since you have no medicine for my body, do you have any medicine for my soul? Why, well, yes. Yes. Will this soul medicine help my soul regain its health? Oh, indeed, yes. And how does one drink this, this soul medicine? Do you remember what I've told you from God's book? How Jesus came to earth and died for your sin? And how you must believe it with your whole heart and ask God to forgive your sin? Yes, I remember. Is that all I have to do? That is right. So, this medicine is taken through the ear instead of the mouth and absorbed by the heart instead of the stomach. Exactly. There is nothing else to do. One only has to listen and let the words catch. Then comes understanding and belief, and that is how the soul gets its health. It is not difficult. No. In fact, it is very simple. So this is how you delude us. What? You try to get me to listen to your book's words that will change my mind and my heart. I, I only want to... Leave! Leave our country, Miss Amy. Do you think I would allow your medicine in my heart? Go. No. You have no medicine that can cure my body. I want none to cure my soul. I will never drink your medicine. I have no use for you. I have no use for your Lord Jesus. Let both of you go! Dear Lord, I did not come to India to impress people. I, I only want to please you. 
Nothing is worth doing at all if it is not something that will last. I have no work to do except as your servant. Help me. Help me. May I have the grace to live above every human motive. Simply with you and to you. Amen. But did you catch Amy's attitude at the end? Now, it didn't matter if people rejected her light or not. She wasn't shining it for them. She was shining it for God. Her heart's desire was to live simply with him and to him. God was her focus. I see where you're going with this. Well, right now, you're too focused on Mark and how he will react when you share your light with him. Instead, your focus should be on God. You're right, Dad. You see, son, all of those people, Hudson Taylor, Amy Carmichael, and many more, they were a light in their generation. But we still need to be lights in our generation. And if we aren't, then who will? I... I want to be a light, Dad. I know you do, son. But... I'm still scared. You don't think Hudson Taylor or Amy Carmichael were scared? Well, they probably were. You bet they were. But they didn't let that stop them. Thanks, Dad. I'll talk with you later, son. Let me know how it goes. Oh, hey, Mark. Hey. How's it going? Um, good. Good. I, uh... What's up, man? I need to talk to you about something. Something important. <laughs> okay, sure. What's it all about? Well, I need to tell you about my best friend. His name is... Jesus. In Lighting Your Generation, written by Caleb Thiessen, you heard Jesse Madrano as the father, Xander Hartman as the son, Caleb Thiessen as Hudson Taylor, Nate Graham as Taylor's friend, Tim Wynn as a Chinese man, Renee Thiessen as Amy Carmichael, Jake Tackett as the Missionary Society representative, Elizabeth E. as the Indian woman, and Jonah Connor as Mark. Final sound design and mix was by Caleb Thiessen. The music was arranged and performed by Jesse Madrano, and the Audio Adventure Theater theme was composed by Garrett Vandenberg. And I am Levi Stoller. Lighting Your Generation was brought to you by CTD Productions. Be sure to check out our website at ctdproductions.blogspot.com.